Not everybody is married. Some people are single, but th those who are coupled, some people are um, doing well and no, even a, uh, a challenging transit isn't going to uh, keep them from being together. Um, and it may actually be something positive. But for, for those who are on thin ice, it can be um, the final blow. Um, this can just bring more conflict. There might be some particular bone of contention between the two of you that is just flaring up. And what if it's like a mother-in-law who comes and goes and creates trouble and then, you know, comes, you know, comes to visit and that's when there's tension. Who knows? Who knows what that can be? But another thing that the seventh house can be our legal affairs. And so if Mars is here, there might be some kind of legal affair that is heating up that has to be dealt with and that, you know, that you're active with. On the eighth, Mercury goes into Aquarius. Aquarius is your fourth house of home and family. Now, um, Mercury has been in the third house, which can be um, siblings aunts and uncles, cousins, but you know, they're not, they're usually not going to be as close to you as your brothers and sisters. So Mercury here means it could mean increased communication with them. This is an area where we're going to see a Mercury retrograde. So, um, forewarned is forearmed. Um, so knowing that that is happening at the end of the month, watch your P's and Q's when it comes to your siblings or anybody. Neighbors can be third house. Your aunts and uncles, watch how you speak because something could get twisted. Something could, you know, not be received in the way that you intended and it can create a miscommunication. Um, the other thing too is Mercury rules the third house and the third house I believe can be your business sales and, and contracts. I think, um, all of these can be affected. So if there's like a brief, uh, well, like you feel like your, your, uh, business or something is like, uh, stalled or something, just understand that this is a very fast moving transit and it shouldn't have much of an effect. You may even know, have noticed this, or you will notice this in January, starting from mid month, when uh, Mercury goes into its shadow, that something connected to your business is slowing down a little bit. Um, another thing too is, um, the, because Mars has gone into this area that can be legal affairs. This may have something to do with family, a family, maybe a property. Um, cause then the very same day Venus goes into Capricorn, um, when Mercury goes into that fourth house. So the fourth house is the house of, I believe the mother because cancer rules this house. Cancer is, is connected to the mother. I've read the father. Okay whatever. I mean, family of origin, you can say parents. Okay. You're talking to these people. You're talking to your siblings. You're talking, maybe you're going back and forth. Maybe you're negotiating something. Um, Venus is going into that third house. So Venus can be money. If you, if you or a sibling is, um, I don't know if we would say an executor of the will or, that they have uh, power of attorney, something where they get to um, control the finances of an elderly parent, perhaps, that might be something that you're going back and forth about. Now, it doesn't mean that it has to be contentious, but I do want to bring up the fact that Mars is in that seventh house. So there might be some kind of a legal matter that you are very... Um, hell bent on, you know, bringing to some kind of, uh, fruition or a resolution. And because you're a Scorpio, you may have very intense feelings about this. 
Scorpio, you may feel like there's, a, if you do feel like, uh, there is some kind of issue, uh, with siblings that may cause you to be more proactive about this. But I, I do want to say, I don't see, except for the Mars in the seventh house, I don't see it as being particularly, um, negative per se. Um, the Mercury retrograde may create some kind of misunderstanding, miscommunication, but, um, in case that there is something that is a, that is, um, where you're not on the same page, because Venus can actually be harmony with siblings in the third house. But in case there's something that is problematic, look to your own motivation. If you're motivated by uh, revenge for some reason, if you're like the kind of person who um, felt like you were always um, not, you know, like your sibling was favored over you and you feel this sense of like, you're trying to, you know, right the wrong of that or something that might be coming from a place that doesn't serve you. So you have to like any action that you take, if it's a legal action or what have you has to be done, you know, coming from, good intentions, you know, not trying to settle a score or anything like that. Um, so on the 13th, we have a new moon at 23 degrees of Capricorn that is in this, uh, third house. Um, that could be like a new job in teaching or some, if you work, um, doing public speaking, that could be the third house. Uh, if you have, created a blog or something like that, something online or something that is written new, a new, um, training program that you're going into perhaps on the 14th or maybe a new agreement with a sibling. I mean, I, I think that this can be positive. Venus is there. So I don't think it has to be something negative with siblings. On the 14th, Uranus goes direct at six degrees of Taurus. So um, this is, this is um, forming an exact conjunction with Mars um, at the exact same degree in Taurus, okay? So for a lot of you, this is actually going to be in your sixth house, um, I believe rather than the seventh. Okay. Um, because, because it's at an early degree. So especially if you are, um, a Scorpio sun born in October, but even, but not necessarily through the end of the month through six degrees of Taurus, uh, Scorpio and, um, or uh, Scorpio rising. And for the rest of you, this will likely be in your sixth house of work. So, I mean, it's possible that some of you will walk off the job and just say you've had enough. Um, Uranus, you know, has already been in this house, um, for a while. So it's possible that some of you have been working remotely, on the internet since Uranus rules technology. Now, because I've been talking about third house triggers, if you are a teacher and you have been doing technology and perhaps, um, they want to go back into the classroom or they, whatever there's, or maybe you were in the classroom and they want to go back to zoom calls. You may just be fed up. You might be tired. You might be feeling like they're jerking you around and you just like, have had it. I don't know, but there's a very uh, strong sense of wanting to break free. Uh, Uranus is very much like this, but then you have Mars, which is so can be rebellious and also very rash. On the 19th, the sun goes into another, uh, <laughs> this is that house. Oh, you know, I forgot to mention that you already have Jupiter and Saturn in Aquarius. So, um, you have the, all this energy in that, uh, third house now. Um, I mean, I'm sorry, that fourth house now, 
Uh, I'm, uh, <laughs> I hope I didn't confuse you, Scorpio. Um, Jupiter and Saturn in December went into the fourth house in uh, the sign of Aquarius. And now the sun and Mercury are in, in that house as well. And um, so I believe, I hope that I did a video for this. I think I did. I think I had already done Saturn a long time ago and I just recently did Jupiter. You can check my channel. Um, I know that you were the last one I think that I had to do. So I'm going to have to double check that, but I think I did one. But anyway, um, this can certainly be a year where, um, or even a time, um, maybe in February, um, come to think of it where you are moving house, where you're going to be living somewhere else for some of you, even into March. And because of that, and, and perhaps that new moon in, in, uh, Pisces is more like it for some of you, but whatever, um, this can be a time when, um, it's really the right time because you also have Jupiter, you know, Jupiter, um, in the fourth house can indicate somebody who moves to a bigger house or who has their household expand with new members or a new member, and therefore they need a new room. So whether it's a new child, new baby, uh, an in-law, a parent, whatever. On the 28th, we have the sun going, I mean, um, why am I saying sun? We have a full moon, nine degrees of Leo, another fixed sign. So this is during a full moon, the sun is opposing it. So we have the sun at nine degrees of Aquarius. And then we have the full moon directly opposing it from the 10th house of career. So that might be something that is going on career versus home there. Now you have so much pulling you in at the home front that um, the career may seem like it's getting second shrift or short shrift. I'm saying the wrong thing. Um, but you know what? I, I will say, uh, Scorpio, that a full moon in the in in um the tenth house can be a time of a promotion, um, because it can bring you to a new um height. Also, maybe this is a time when you're retiring and perhaps the the whole um, housing situation is all part of that. You're downsizing or you're, you're changing your, your type of uh, living situation. And the full moon is that ending your career. On the 30th, we have a Mercury retrograde at 26 degrees of Aquarius. So we're having some kind of um, rethinking something in that fourth house. So if you have a house on the market, or if you were putting a bid on a house, perhaps you're having second thoughts, or there's some kind of thing in the contract that needs to be resolved. These are, you know, Mercury is a very fast moving planet. So anything that happens will be resolved within a matter of several weeks, or we could say a month is more likely more when it could happen. But anyway, it sounds really good, uh, Scorpio. I hope that you enjoyed this. If you would like to look at 2021 in greater depth and more accurately, you know, with your own uh, exact chart, natal chart, I do have a transit reading. I do have a combination with natal chart interpretation. And I have just recently um, offered um, a special... I just uh, started this special price of two full length uh, chart readings for both of these areas. They're just extended an hour each for a special price. You can find out um, all of all about these readings at the link below. I'm at rainamoonastrology.com. Happy New Year. Take care. Bye.